Welcome to Motorcycle.com's 2013 World Cruiser Shootout. Harley sells billions of dollars of big-inch cruisers. Americans love them. And now we've got manufacturers from around the world trying to build their interpretations in an effort to strip some sales from Harley-Davidson. John, tell us some more about these different bikes. Well, from Japan, we've got Stars Roadliner S, Art Deco styling. America brings us Harley Davidson's 2014 redesigned Fat Bob. It's now part of the dark custom line, muscle car inspired. Italian brings us the new Moto Guzzi California 1400 Custom. We chose it as our cruiser of the year. It's been getting raves, excellent motorcycle all around, and we're really excited to see how it matches up against these other bikes. Britain brings us Triumph's Thunderbird. It's been a stalwart for a few years now, and we're going to see how this parallel twin matches up against these other V-twins. The Triumph Thunderbird's a pretty unique engine-wise. Uh, 1600cc parallel twin compared to the transverse twin of the Guzzi and the two V-twins of the Harley and the Star, not the Yamaha. The Guzzi's got that transverse twin. It's very iconic, very cool. Makes the bike shimmy sideways whenever you hit the gas in that kind of weird style that Guzzi's normally do. The Harley, well, what can you say? It's an air-cooled V-twin. It rumbles, it shakes, it makes you feel alive when you ride it. Then on the end there, you've got the Star with the biggest engine of the bunch, 1854 cc's V-twin, air-cooled, the most powerful one here. All we can keep saying about it, it's refined. It feels like it's been well thought out. In addition to the en engine differences, uh, we've got weight. You've got uh, two bikes that are just a tick over 700 pounds. And then you've got the Triumph and the Star here, which are about 750. Some minor things that we've noticed from there, uh, you've got fuel mounted gauges on all three bikes, except for the Guzzi. It's got a nice big round, uh, more performance oriented uh, gauge cluster up on top of the uh, triple clamp. Uh, you got floorboards and heel toe shifters on the Star and on the Guzzi, where the Triumph and the Harley are just your regular foot peg uh, arrangement. You know, besides that, um, I guess a big clear leader right now in terms of technology is the Guzzi. You've got traction control, ABS, and ride modes. The Triumph's got ABS. Uh, the other two bikes here are devoid of any real technological improvements. So. Having said all that, uh, we're going to ride these things out of the LA River and into downtown Los Angeles. The new Harley Davidson Fat Bob has been redesigned for 2014. It's got the distinctive bug eye dual headlights, but it's now part of the dark custom line of bikes from Harley Davidson. Blacked out engine, blacked out components. The Harley Davidson costs about $1,000 more. It doesn't come with cruise control, and if you want ABS, that'll cost you another $795. But it's a Harley Davidson. Is it worth it? We're gonna find out. Before me now is the Star Roadliner S, uh, along with its compatriot, the Straddle Liner. Uh, this has been one of my favorite cruiser models available, largely because of its Art Deco styling. From its large headlight nacelle up front, to these bullet tapered blinkers, to the highly stylized numerals on its instrument cluster, it's just a very cool bike in general. Going on with styling, uh, Star does a very good job keeping the engine compartment down here open. Uh, there's no exhaust getting in the way. And because it's an air-cooled bike, you know, they can keep it nice and thin down here at the base of the cylinders. It just comes up to a nice wide uh, uh, head on top. Then it goes in a, from a you know, two into one exhaust. And for what we found today, this is one bike here among the four that really emits one of the best exhaust notes we've heard so far. It is one of the larger engines that we also have here. Provides a ton of good torque. Uh, going down the freeway, great passing power. Uh, one bad thing about it is it only is a five-speed transmission. So when you're at freeway speeds, you know, you're always kind of searching for another gear because the engine you know, seems like it's working hard and it does get you know, a little buzzy but not bad. You know, a six gear would just alleviate that all around. Um, another small detriment, this is one of the earlier fuel injected models from Star and what we've noticed is on the off throttle there's just a lot of you know, engine uh, torque braking and kind of just throws you forward especially if you have, you have a passenger on the back. It carries its weight a little bit better than the other 750 pound motorcycle here, the Triumph Thunderbird, 
uh, very maneuverable, uh, handles nicely. The large floorboards on here do, you know, hinder its uh, cornering clearance some, but, you know, for the most part, that's not what this bike is built for. And, you know, it's definitely in the running for, I think, coming away with one of the uh, best bike honors in this shootout. I don't even know your name. Moto Guzzi's new California Custom is perhaps the most unique bike here. It's got a uh, full electronic suite, including trash control and ride modes, standard ABS. But standing out even more than that is its oddball engine configuration. It's a V-twin, like uh, most cruisers, but it's set across the frame. So we've got the cylinder head sticking out to each side. It's also the only one of the group that has a uh, shaft drive, so there's no uh, messing with a belt or a chain. Coming from Italy, they care uh, a lot about function. Uh, it's not just about style, although uh, I think this carries off a Italian style quite well. So we've got the highest seat height of the group and uh, one of the best handling chassis, probably the most ground clearance of the group. So it's got some uh, performance edge to it. But with the smallest engine of the group, it has the least torque. On the plus side, it likes to rev, and so it's got good horsepower when you rev it. The engine is rubber mounted, so at an idle, it's shaking around like crazy, but as soon as you're moving, it smooths out, and it's one of the, the smoothest cruisers you can, uh, you can think of going down the road. Standard cruise control also helps get down the highway, and uh, really, it's a, it's, a, it's a different take on cruisers, and yet it still fits into this group quite well. So right here we've got the 2013 Triumph Thunderbird. Relatively unchanged since the 2009 introduction of this bike, but you know what? It really doesn't need to be changed all that much. At its heart down here we've got the 1600 cc parallel twin engine, as opposed to the V-twins of the other guys. What also sets this bike apart, it's liquid cooled, as opposed to the air cooled or air oil cooled versions of the other bikes in this test. So uh, you've got some real performance gains that Triumph is really good at doing. Right here in the Thunderbird, uh, what I like about it is the Parallel Twin is a much shorter, much more compact engine than the V-Twins. So it allows me, I'm kind of a short, stumpy dude, allows me to really get close to the handlebars from the seat and the pegs. It's a much more comfortable riding position for me. Then you've got these twin exhaust pipes that look really cool. You've got this kind of bowling ball-esque bluish blackish paint job on it it looks really trick overall it's a it's a cool motorcycle i mean you've got torque where you want it power where you need it it's a pretty decent handler for a cruiser i mean overall it's it's really trick and i think it's gonna put up a good fight against these other three motorcycles all right we're at the end of our world cruiser shootout day and it's been an interesting test to see how these bikes are built differently trying to appeal to different customers fat bob here i think it's the best looking bike style wise it's hard to beat harley davidson anybody who's looking for a high-end custom is going to stop by the harley davidson store and this delivers a lot of what we've learned to appreciate about harley's and Again, though, it's not the highest performance machine, so you give up a little bit of something to get the Harley-Davidson class and prestige. The uh, California model that we had before this, when we last did a test like this, was also the best performing bikes in terms of how it would go around the corners, cornering clearance, you know, lighter steering, uh, lighter bike, all those things. And this is just, this new model California is just a better personification of what the old one was. It's got one of the best goozy engines I think we've ever ridden. It goes up to red line and bounces off the limiter before you even know what's happening. I mean, it's the only bike here with an electronic suite. Uh, we've got ABS on the Triumph. Uh, it's available on the Harley, not on the Star. You know, but none of them has what this bike has. But when it comes to going out and tackling twisties, you know, which the Italians are going to put way above what some of the other brands are going to do, this bike accomplishes all of that. Yeah. As far as performance goes, I really dig this star. Uh, of course, with the biggest engine, you're gonna get the most power, definitely the most torque. And it's the first thing I felt after riding all four of these was, wow, this star goes. It just leaps off the line and takes off. The ergonomics is a bit much for my little piddly stature. About 75, 
I feel like a big sail and I can't go any faster because I'm trying to hang on for dear life. Different sized riders won't have that issue, obviously, but for me, that's what I found a little bit distracting about the star. I gotta echo what you say about the star. That motor is killer and it's just a blast to, to give it a handful. It's the brute of the bunch and it's very special in that regard. The Triumph is kind of an oddball because it's uh, it's less expensive than these bikes and to ride it, I, I think it's a really good performing cruiser, uh, but in this class of bikes, it maybe doesn't stand out the way these other ones do in their own special ways. With the Triumph, it costs a little less and you can see where maybe Triumph saves some money. The hand grips feel kind of plasticky. It's important to point out that, you know, since this bike came out in what, 2009, it hasn't really been updated. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Triumph update the Thunderbird here in the next couple of years. And it, it performs well. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think anybody's going to buy that and wish, you know, uh, they had more performance on that. Exactly. Livers in that respect. Well, we've ridden them all. We've run them up and down the alleyways and streets of downtown Los Angeles and up and down the LA River. Gotten them real dirty and had a lot of fun. Uh, we've touched on a lot of these features of these bikes, but you can read all of it in full detail on Motorcycle.com. Nothing lasts forever, you're gonna save my soul. Nothing is forever.